and welcome to Polish with Ray. I'm Rachel and today I am going to be sharing with you my fall rack for 2023. Before we get started, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you're excited to see what I want to wear this fall. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do so you don't miss out on future uploads. So you all know probably that summer polishes are my absolute favorite. That being said, I love fall too. I Well, I just love going through my collection and picking out nail polishes for the upcoming season. So even though I've been loving my summer colors the past couple months, I went through my collection and picked out these fall colors back in June. <laughs> I just, I love the richness of fall shades. I love how they reflect the changes we see in the leaves and in the sky. It's just very comforting to me. So that being said, I picked way too many polishes for my rack this season. I have not counted, but I bet there are at least 60, 70 nail polishes that I'm hoping to wear. I probably won't get around to all of them, but I've done a really good job this year of wearing most of my rack. I think for my summer rack, I picked around 60 shades and I got around to about 50. And then in the spring, I actually got around to wearing every single polish on my spring rack, except for one, which I carried over into the summer rack and wore it in the summer. <laughs> So I may come pretty close to wearing my fall rack. That's the goal, we will see. And if you're not really familiar with what a seasonal rack is, a lot of nail polish wearers kind of comb through their collection, looking for shades that inspire them for that season that they'd like to get on their nails. And they put them in a bucket or a basket or on an acrylic rack, that's what I do, and put them right near their nail polish space <laughs> where they paint their nails so they won't forget about them. It just serves as some inspiration when trying to decide what to put on your nails for that season. For me personally, it also helps me get around to wearing my polishes that are untried, which is why this season, and I think this was the same this summer and maybe in the spring too, but every single polish on my fall rack this year is an untried polish, meaning I've never worn it before. And quite a few of them are repeats, like they've been on last year's fall rack or even the year before that. And so if I don't get around to wearing them this season, I might de-stash them. I don't know, we'll have to see. All right, this video is going to be very long. I just already know. So let's go ahead and get into the swatches. All right, so this year for fall, I picked around 60 polishes, maybe a little bit more. I think quite a few more. <laughs> and I leaned heavily towards reds, purples, and blacks and browns, which is kind of unusual for me. I think it ended up that way because I only pulled polishes this season that were untried and apparently I have a lot of untried fall polishes in those colors. So we're going to try to wear as many of them as I can this season. Quite a few of which I've actually already worn. Um, one is on my nails right now. I'm currently wearing Ethereal Lacquer Hades. Um, it looks quite a bit more blue in the bottle than it does on my nails. But yeah, if you were wondering, that's what I'm wearing. All right, we'll start with reds first. This first one is from ILNP and it's called Diablo. Here's Diablo in three coats. I'm very excited to get this on the nails. It's one of ILNP's best-selling shades, um, like their top 20 maybe, and I've been eyeing it since I've been wearing indie polishes. It finally came up in a stash and I snagged it, and yeah, gotta get this on my nails soon. Up next, we've got Polished For Days Scarlet Oak. This one has like a purpley reddish base with lots of autumnal flakies. Here's what this one looks like in three coats. It's beautiful, but significantly more sheer than I thought it would be. So I may end up topping, using it as a topper over something else. And next from BCB Lacquers, we have Witch's Broom. This one is a gorgeous red base. There's some hollow in there. I think it's linear, but there's not that much of it. And some multi-chrome flakes. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this one yet. It's another one that I grabbed in a D stash. It looks really beautiful in the bottle, but I don't know about it on the nails. I don't always love multi-chrome flakes. Next up from Nailed It, we have You Cran Do It. This one is a cranberry base, which I mean, I've got to wear this around Thanksgiving <laughs> with all of these beautiful, shiny, shifty flakes and some holographic scattered holographic. I don't know why I said that like that. So here is that nailed it. It's a little bit more pink leaning on the nail than it was in the bottle, but I love nailed it flakies. I know I'm going to love this one. 
And kind of rounding out these more burgundy shades from Bees Needs Lacquer, we have Familia as Familia. This one is in the Lion with a Thorn in Its Paw finish. I've got a lot of those on my rack this season. And it has a, oh my goodness, it's hard to tell, but it has kind of like a burnt red base with lots of shifts to red, gold, and green and scattered hollow flakes. Here it is, I believe, in two coats. Really gorgeous opacity and just perfection in a bottle. I mean, if I had to pick one finish to wear for the rest of my life on my nails, I think it would be this one. It's just perfect. Next from Colorista Carol, we have Slappy's Tie. This is a super rich, saturated red linear holographic. It's very vampy. Here it is in two coats. Uh, this I've had on my rack, I think, for the past three years. <laughs> And I just haven't gotten around to wearing it because I'm scared because I know it's going to stain my nails so bad It has a reputation of like wear three coats of base coat and you're still gonna get staining So I'm kind of nervous about that, but I just need to I just need to go for it. It's beautiful I want to keep it. I want to wear it. It might be my ha Halloween mani this year I've got I've got to wear this this season from lemming lacquer. We have I think it's pronounced Hecate this one is a brick red with shifting shimmer that shifts red to gold to copper to green and it's got scattered hollow. So here you can see what it looks like in three coats. That shimmer just really pops. And description wise, it sounds kind of similar to the Bees Knees Lacquer. Um, familia is Familia, but this one you can see is much more of like a brick red and then this one is more like a purple leaning base. Continuing on with my reds, we've got 90 Lacquer B Plus, B Positive. This one has a red jelly base. It's very lightly tinted, super sheer, with all sorts of pretty glitter, square, hex, black shreds. We see sparkles of gold and pink in there, copper too, and lots of holographic. Here's what this one looks like in three coats. It is very sheer, like I said. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna end up wearing this as a topper. I just don't think I'll be happy with how it looks on its own, but the components in here are really fun. From Cirque Colors, we have Toadstool. Toadstool is an orange leaning red. It appears in the bottle. It looks like a red that's slightly dusty and muted with just a little bit of orange in there. Here's what it looks like in two coats um, on the swatch wheel and on my nails because I am currently wearing this as a pedicure. This one reads a lot more like a cherry red. It's quite a bit brighter than what I was expecting. I think my bottle has ugly bottle syndrome and it looks a little bit more muted than it actually is. Um, I don't know that this is really fall appropriate, but it is super perfect for this summer to fall transition when I'm wearing it. This next one is from Polish and it's called Tiny Ginger Snaps. It's another one with kind of a brick red brown leaning base and it has those classic polished gold flakes. Here's what it looks like in three coats. The pond effect in here is glorious. I love seeing all the dimension crea created by those gold flakes and this color is fantastic. It just gives warm, cozy vibes. I can't wait to wear it. I know, I'm sorry if my voice sounds weird. I am going through it with my allergies right now. So yes, apologies. Next from KB Shimmer, we have Slay Cozy. This one is a red leaning orange linear holographic. It's another one that I've had on my rack for several seasons and just haven't gotten around to it. I think I'm just not super drawn in by Linear Holographic. It's just not my favorite finish. It's pretty, but I'd take a Shimmer or a Scattered Hollow or probably even a Flaky over Linear Hollow any day. But this one is really pretty. Next from Zoya, we have Amy. Amy is a bright pumpkin orange base with really pretty goldish copper shimmer. In the bottle, it looks strongly gold, but on the nail, it looks copper. I actually already wore this one too and got a lot of compliments. <laughs> So here is Amy in three coats. I think this one was gifted to me. So if you gifted it to me, thank you. Because like I said, really loved it. And I thought it was perfect for this summer to fall transitional time. One more orange shade on my rack. I really wish I had more orange shades now that I'm looking at it. But like I mentioned earlier, I really try to pull only untried polishes. So I might end up throwing a few oranges that I've worn before and loved 
on my nails later on in the season. But anyway, this one is from Saki Cosmetics and it's called number 13. <laughs> this one has a really interesting, almost prugly orange base. It's coming off a little bit brighter on camera than it is in person. In person, it leads a little bit more brown and it's got all of these flakes that shift gold to green. They are multi-chrome flakes. Oh, I see red and pink in there as well. <laughs> they're multi-chrome flakes, but they're really tiny. So here is what that Saki Cosmetics looks like on the swatch wheel so pretty and this is the first shade um, that I've really worn from them I kind of want to get my hands on more if you have recommendations on what to grab from this brand let me know because um, I'm intrigued so pretty originally when I did my rack I had no yellows so I had to find a yellow that was untried most of them I've just worn already um, but this one's from Believe Beauty and it is called Golden Girl it's a cream shade I don't have many of those on my rack this season and it's kind of like a bright happy mustard color Here's what Golden Girl looks like on the swatch wheel. And immediately when I swatched it, I said, um, that looks like something I just wore. <laughs> so I pulled out Essie Check Your Baggage and they're pretty close, I'll show you. Check Your Baggage is just a tinge more bright um, than Golden Girl. The Believe Beauty has a little bit more brown in it, which I think makes it perfect for fall, but similar ideas. And last time I wore the Essie, I wore it as a pedicure and loved it. So I might wear the Believe Beauty as a pedicure. Maybe as my next pedicure. I have one from Bluebird Lacquer. We're gonna see a lot of Bluebird Lacquer on my rack this season. This came out in last year's Bluebird Advent Calendar. I wore a good amount of that calendar last season, but this one I didn't get around to. It's called the Yes Hollow Queen. <laughs> it's in that classic shattered hollow Bluebird formula, but this time it's got a chartreuse base and shimmer that shifts gold to green to blue. So amazing. This one I have been eyeing all month because it looks incredible. I just haven't gotten around to wearing it yet. Um, I kind of want to save it for October. I just feel like it feels more Halloween-y than fall. Um, so I'll be wearing it probably in the next couple weeks. From Moonshine Manny, we have Build Me Up Buttercup. This one is another prugly shade. Those are just so perfect in the fall season, but this one looks more limey on camera than it is in real life. In real life, it's coming off quite a bit more brown as well. <laughs> I'm not sure why. This one has a really smooth jelly formula. There, it's more color accurate. Really smooth jelly formula on this one. It's gonna take three coats to build up. And I've had this on quite a few seasonal racks too, so I need to wear it this season. From Painted Polish, we have Slime All Yours. <laughs> this one is a slimy green base with gold flakes and finish that Painted Polish does really well. I always, when I think of these gold flakes, I think of Painted Polish and I think of Polish. Palish. They both do them perfectly. Here's what Slime All Yours looks like in three coats. You can see it's just a little bit more green leaning than Build Me Up Buttercup from Moonshine Manny. Really fun and bright and icky all at the same time. <laughs> the next shade is from Sweet and Sour Lacquer and it's called What Are You Doing in My Swamp? This one's a really pretty shimmer shade. I thought it had a green base, but I think the base is actually clear maybe, and it's got shimmer that shifts green to gold to blue. In the bottle, it looks super green, but on the nails, it looks super duper gold. Here's what it looks like in three coats. You can see just how sheer it is. And yeah, even on my swatch wheel, it looks pretty green, but I wore this one already and I saw mostly gold. I think next time I'm gonna pair it with some kind of green base to bring out that shift. Next from Orly, we have Elysian Fields. This one is like the progliest shade on my rack this season. It is a green brown, and it's coming off a whole lot prettier on camera than it is in real life. It is very brown leaning. Here's what it looks like in three coats. Yeah, this is more color accurate. Um, really great formula, but definitely a progly. <laughs> And every time I look at this shade, I can't help but think of um, Hillary from Mediocre Manny's. I feel like this is this is her shade now. <laughs> from Polish, we have Little Olives. I just love that name. I think it's so cute. This one's like a cooler, sagey, kind of grayed out green. It's got shimmer that shifts green to gold to blue and scattered holographic. Here's what it looks like in three coats. And I did pick some rich saturated greens, mostly chartreuse greens, um, but I did wanna pull a few softer sagey greens cause there's just something kind of mysterious about them, I think, and that makes them perfect for the fall season. 
This one's from Cirque Colors and it's called Succulent Garden. This one's also a more sagey, grayed out green base with the shimmer that shifts red to gold to green and scattered holographic sparkle. Here's what it looks like in three coats and you can see its base is a lot more grayed out and cooler than the polish I just showed. This one had been on my lemmings list for quite a while. I'd seen lots of swatches of it on Instagram and thought it looked beautiful on so many people, but for some reason just doubted that it would look pretty on me. Jury is out, I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see, um, but I'm glad to have it in my collection. It does seem just as beautiful in person as it did in the pictures. One I just couldn't wait to wear is from Bluebird Lacquer. It's called A Real Know It Owl. This one is a shattered holographic and it is like an olivey green, but it's pretty bright. It's on the bright side of olives. Here's what it looked like, I think in two coats. Really easy to work with, smooth formula. This whole collection, actually all of Bluebird Shattered Hollows are my fave. I know I said Lion with a Thorn in its paw favorite finish. This might be tied. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're just so easy to work with. They're always very consistently two coat formulas and they're so sparkly. They're so holographic. To me, they look like a glitter, but they, you know, don't give you the difficulty of removal. They dry down smooth. I love Shattered Hollows from Bluebird. And then I do have a couple teals on my rack. This one's from Schley Polish and it's called Dumpster Fire 2020. <laughs> this one is a green leaning teal base with scattered holographic and shimmer that shifts red to gold. Here's what it looks like in three coats. It looks pretty. The shimmer is kind of hazy in there. It's not super vibrant and noticeable, so I'm curious to see if on the nails it shows up anymore. And the other teal on my rack this season is another blue word. It's called No Egrets. This one is a Shattered Hollow as well, same collection as a real Know It Owl, which that collection should be restocking sometime in the fall. Lucy restocks it every season. Um, but anyway, this is a teal Shattered Hollow, so pretty. So here is what this one looks like in two coats. Like these, I don't wanna just like make this video all about <laughs> Bluebird Shattered Hollows, but seriously, I am in love. Like I've already worn one this month. I want to wear them all this month. I love them. <laughs> kind of moving into my blues now. This one's from Polished for Days and it's called Memo to Me. This one looks like it has a blue base, but it's actually more of like a green jelly base and it's packed with gorgeous glowy blue to green shifting flakes and black flakes too. This is another one that I've actually already worn. I felt like its brightness in the, as far as the flakes go really made it perfect for this transitional time and it's beautiful. I got some compliments while wearing it, but I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot do and that's what really matters so pretty next from bees knees lacquer we have another one with the line with the thorn in its paw finish it's called i want to peel you like a potato <laughs> this one is a brighter blue but it still has a dusty quality to it and it's got shimmer that shifts red to copper to gold to green and holographic flakies lots of them wow look at that shimmer Here's what it looks like in three coats. It's brightness really makes me wanna go ahead and wear it now before it's fully fall. Technically when I'm filming this, it's still the end of summer. So this one I think I'll wear very soon. We've got Estella Chroma next. This one is the monthly mystery from October last year. It's a green leaning blue linear holographic. I've got quite a few linears on my rack this season. I hope I get to wear them, this one especially. Here's what it looks like in three coats. Even though it did take three coats to build up, Stella Chroma does linear hollows really well. Um, some of my favorite linear hollows are from her. She just, they're really jelly and squishy. And on the first coat, they look kind of sheer, but they build up beautifully. And I feel like the fact that you need to build them up to three coats gives them a little bit more dimension, if that makes sense. Next from Night Owl Lacquer, we have Let Nothing Burns Like the Cold. This one is a kind of teal-ish peacock blue base with all of these gorgeous fiery flakes, red to gold to green to copper. Oh, I love this one. Here's what it looks like built up in three coats. I think it looks a little bit darker on the nail wheel than it did in the bottle shot, um, but that only helps those flakies pop even more. I must be really drawn to these kind of 
blues this season. This one's beautiful. Up next, we have another Cirque. This one is called Navy Jelly. It is a navy jelly polish. <laughs> um, but I feel like uh, if I were naming it, I wouldn't call it navy jelly because it's not as dark as what I think as being a navy. It's almost like a denim blue color. Again, a little bit darker in person than it's coming off on camera. This one I fully intend to wear as like a jelly sandwich. I mean, I kind of have to, right? Beautiful, beautiful color. We've got an Olive Ave polish next. This one is called Raindrop. This one is another kind of dusty green leaning blue and it's got this scattered holographic glitter. That's just so fun. <laughs> Here's what it looks like in three coats and I just love that base color. It's kind of mysterious and dusty and I think it released in a spring collection but it just feels so perfect for fall to me. Next up is a China Glaze. This one is Sample Sizing Me Up. This one had a beautiful formula and it's such a pretty, bright, flattering color. Another one that I'll probably wear here in the next few weeks. These blues are just, to me, they just say September. Like how flattering is that? Yeah, really great formula, love that shade. And next is the one I'm currently wearing, Ethereal Lacquer Hades. This one, like I mentioned, is more of like a baby blue, a dusty baby blue in the bottle with shimmer that's super intense that shifts red to gold to green. I think when you have a lighter base like the nail wheel, that blue base really comes through, but my nails are slightly stained <laughs> um, and I did not wear a blurring base of any kind or any kind of base, just a regular base coat. So it really comes out as being more gray on me. It's beautiful, but not what I had imagined. If I'd known it would look like this on me, I would have saved it for winter time or maybe paired it with some kind of base. From Atomic Polish, we have I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> this one is a bright blue linear holographic with shimmer, like multi-chrome shimmer I think, that shifts purple to gold. In the bottle it looks perfect for fall, but on the nail it is a very bright blue, so I thought I'd better wear this before summertime was officially over. That's why I wore it a couple weeks ago, and I got quite a few compliments on it. It had a great formula too, it was fully opaque in two coats, very saturated shade. Up next from Bees Knees Lacquer, we have How Many Lives Does This Guy Have? It felt like when I stopped swatching for Bees Knees when I started uh, my break, my maternity leave from swatching, I guess, <laughs> um, that they suddenly started releasing so many of this finish and I can't resist, so I bought all of them. <laughs> this one was gifted though. On the swatch wheel, I see I should have put it with the blacks, but because of that intense blue glow, I did put it with the blues. It looks a little bit sheer, but I want to wear it on its own. I think with those flakies, it'll build up to opacity no problem. And the last blue on my rack is a Bluebird Shattered Hollow. I'm sure no one's surprised. Um, this one is called, it's called Got Any Sparrow Change. It is a purple leaning blue shattered hollow polish. This one had great opacity. It built up in two coats and I mean, I'm kind of out of words for these. They are absolutely incredible. A dream to apply. I'll probably wear every single one of them this season. <laughs> All right, purples next. We're starting with this indie angel shade called Poet. This one is a royal purple linear holographic. It has so much holographic pigment in there that it really does feel a little bit um, dustier, but I think the base is not dusty. It just looks dusty because of all of the hollow. Here is what it looks like in three coats. It did have more of a jelly base, um, but you can see that hollow really pops even though it has such a dark jelly base. Indie Angel is no longer in business, unfortunately, but I still have a few polishes I wanna get around to wearing from them. Next from Bees Knees Lacquer, we have It Is My Punishment. This one has a dark purple base with gorgeous shifting shimmer from red to gold to green and scattered holographic flakes. How beautiful is this? So gorgeous. I definitely could have worn it in the summertime, so maybe it's another one I'll wear in the next few weeks, but that purple just kind of says October, Halloween to me, so we'll see. 
Up next is an OPI. We don't have too much of them on my rack this season, which is kind of unusual. I feel like I've worn a lot of my OPI, and like I said, I try to pull stuff that I've had that I haven't worn. Um, so this OPI shade is called Abstract After Dark. It is a really rich vampy shade it's got a kind of purpley jelly base and it's packed with this large particle shimmer i feel like you could almost call it micro flakies because they look like flakes to me um that shift purple to kind of like a blue color and then there's a little pink and gold in there as well really interesting especially from opi this isn't the usual like my usual color y'all know purple isn't my favorite and dark purple especially eh, i don't know but i just felt like this was too interesting from a mainstream brand to pass up on so here is what it looks like in three coats and most lighting it just looks like a almost black purple shade but at certain angles you do get glimpses of those shifts they're so pretty and then i have a few lighter purples as well this one is coming off a bit brighter on camera than it does in real life um, but it's called violet visionary i think it was from fall a few years ago and you can see i got it from tj maxx <laughs> Here's what it looks like in three coats. I'm thinking this can make a beautiful pedicure shade here soon, probably in the next couple weeks. Up next from Night Owl Lacquer, we have Love Bridge. This was a purchase I made from um, PPU a couple years ago, but I just haven't gotten around to wearing it because I couldn't decide if it's more suited for fall or spring, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and wear it and then I'll decide. Uh, in the bottle, it's a really pretty kind of like pink leaning purple base, almost like a berry or mauve tone. And it's got all of these incredible shifty flakes. Here's what it looks like in three coats, really beautiful base color. I am so looking forward to wearing this one. Oof, I love it. From Nailed It, and they're another brand that I'm surprised I don't have more on my rack from but i've worn pretty much all of my nailed it <laughs> from nailed it we have i got laid this one is a purple base with some really pretty multi-chrome shifting flakes red copper gold i get got this one because um carolina from gotta love polish loves it here is that nailed it in three coats and i really like how those autumn flakes shift against that purple base it's an interesting color combo this one's from Bluebird Lacquer, that same, I think it's called the Fall Feathered Friends Collection. I could be wrong though. Um, that same Fall Scattered Hollow Collection, and this one is called Catch a Beak Down. It's kind of a plum, beet colored, purpley red base with all of that Scattered Hollow pigment. Here is what it looks like in two coats. Gorgeous formula, just like all the rest. So sparkly, so vampy so comforting these kind of colors are just like sweater scarf colors i love it <laughs> up next is a red-eyed lacquer and this is the only polish i have from this brand i need to shop them more this one's called not a sound and it is an hhc polish inspired by eric carl he's playing a big role in my life right now <laughs> with my daughter and my kids at school i feel like i'm reading eric carl all the time but this one has a brighter purple base and shimmer that shifts green to blue and scattered hollow flakes. This one was quite a bit more sheer than I was expecting. It didn't really build up to full opacity. The shift in the shimmer is beautiful though and so is the hollow flakes. So I may layer it over something else. I think it would look beautiful over Violet Visionary from OPI. So maybe that one. Up next is a multi-chrome shade. Not much of that on my rack. Um, this one's from Quixotic Polish and it's called Delicioso. I think this brand is also closed um, or they've been on a break for a while. Let me know if you know anything about that down in the comments, but this is a gorgeous multi-chrome. Shifts purple to blue to gold to pink to copper. Lots of glorious shifts in here. So here's what this one looks like in three coats. Like I said, very, very shifty. I feel like you're mostly seeing the purple and blue, but from my angle, I can see the gold shifts in there also. Another one I just couldn't wait to wear comes from Polished for Days and it's called Amanita. This one is a purpley pink base with shimmer that shifts red to copper to gold to green and scattered hollow. And I'm just realizing just how much of that finish I put <laughs> on my rack, seriously, it's a lot. Um, but this one I already wore, it's absolutely stunning. I got lots of compliments wearing this one too. Just the perfect purple shade. 
Up next is another Schlie polish, and this one is called Things We Do For Love. This one has a gorgeous like purpley berry base and some very vibrant, I almost wanna say Aurora shimmer that shifts red to copper to gold and some scattered hollow. Here's what it looks like in three coats. Same kind of situation with the other Schlie. The shimmer kind of sits back seat to that pretty base color, um, but I kind of don't mind it. This base color is beautiful and it was super creamy, had a great formula. I do have a moonshine mani on my rack this season. This one's called Mom's Hugs. This released in PPU a couple years ago and it's got a berry base, shifting flakes, red to gold to copper to green. Lots of that on my rack this season too because it just reminds me of fall leaves and uh, some scattered hollow. It's fun because when I got this one, I was thinking about my mom's hugs um, and now I'm a mom myself and now I think about hugging my daughter. Aww. <laughs> Sorry, cheesy moment, um, but I just think the inspo for this polish was cute before. Now it feels like extra cute. So here is what it looks like in three coats. It's a little bit more sheer than I was expecting. It's another one that I may end up layering over something else to really help those flakies pop. Next, we've got another Indie Angel. Um, this is called Leaf Me Alone, and it's a really pretty berry shade, pink berry with linear holographic. Here it is in three coats. It's just a really warm, beautiful berry color. I almost wore this the other day. I didn't have time to put it on, but I just think the base color is super flattering. Oh, I love it. Another one that I've already worn this season, y'all, I've been loving fall. <laughs> I've been ready, ready for fall since the beginning of September. Um, this one's from Color Club and it's called Ghosted. This is just a really pretty warm berry shade as well. It's a cream. Color Club does does cream so well they do so many things so well but their creams i always find to be amazing to work with they've got that beautiful paddle brush this one was a two coater no problem and then the last pink on my rack is from lbk um it is called strong hildy this one was i guess a I don't know. It was one that my husband picked up for me. Here's what it looks like in three coats, and it actually looks pretty good on camera. It looks pretty good in real life, too, but the first two coats were a little bit treacherous. <laughs> it was very patchy and uneven. I feel like it finally started looking nice on the third coat, but I thought to myself, I have this color 10 times over in my collection. Do I really need one that's kind of tough to work with? I don't feel like I do. It's not that special of a color. Um, it's fine though, I really do wanna wear it and then decide if I wanna keep it or not, but I almost got rid of it as soon as I swatched it on here. All right, we're down to the last swatch wheel. Thank you all again so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, so we're gonna finish up with my browns and blacks and metallic shades. This one is from 1422 Designs and it's called A Perilous Journey. This one has like a caramely brown base with gold flakes and they're a really soft like white gold color. Um, that's what drew me into this. I thought it was so interesting. And then really autumny, autumnal shifting flakes from red to copper to gold. Here's what it looks like in three coats and same situation. It just feels like a warm, warm hug. <laughs> These kind of colors are just very cozy and comforting to me. Beautiful. Up next we have a bluebird lacquer. This one is called Heaps of Fun. This one I actually got in a PPU mystery sale that they did. Um, and I was a little bit like, Ugh, I don't know if I like this when I got it. You know I love Bluebird, but you know, this color combination, it is unconventional. <laughs> I This polish did at one point sit in my de-stash pile. But when I went to de-stash, I said I cannot part with this without wearing it first. I do love, I love my bluebirds and this is interesting, so I wanna give it a try. Here's what it looks like in three coats and it's a little bit on the jelly sheer side, so it might be another candidate for layering, we'll see. Up next we have a Sally Hansen Miracle Gel. This one is in the shade, oh what's it say, Spice Age. <laughs> That's a fun name. This one's a really pretty brown metallic. I got this one in a mystery bag too and wasn't super thrilled, but I've really come around on browns the past couple of years. I feel like they're kind of trendy and because of that, makers are making them more and it makes me like them more. You know what I mean? 
Next, we have another Night Owl lacquer. This one is called Friends Don't Lie. This one is a brownie red base with gold holographic glitters. The base is super shifty, like it might be a multi-chrome. Um, and then those gold glitters just mm, add some extra. So here it is in three coats. I don't feel like it looks that impressive on the swatch wheel. It looks way prettier in person. In person, I'm seeing all of those brown, copper, red shifts, and then the sparkle of the reflective glitter. It's really pretty. From Bee's Knees Lacquer, we have Sunrise Sunset. And I can't help, every, every time I read that title, I think, sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. <laughs> Um, but this one has like a dark chocolate brown base with shimmer that shifts red to copper to gold to green and hollow flakes lying with a thorn in its paw finish yet again. <laughs> Here's what it looks like in two coats. Great opacity, really pretty shifting shimmer. And I just don't know when I'm going to wear these browns. I feel like September is too early for brown. You can wear anything anytime, but in my, in my heart, September feels too early for brown. In October, I feel like I should wear spooky things, which only saves November for the browns. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I'm going to have to bust them out earlier than that because I have a lot of pretty ones to wear. <laughs> Up next is a wildflower lacquer. This one never actually got released, but it's called Smooth Criminal. It has a brown base with lots of shifting shimmer, red to copper to gold to green, and linear and scattered hollow maybe. Here's what it looks like in three coats, super shifty. I love wildflower shimmers because the shimmer is just always very attention grabbing. And the hollow, oh, it's just so sparkly. <laughs> Next is another ILNP. I don't know that it's a brown, but that's where I put it. This one's called Bloodline. It has a reddish kind of coppery base color um, and lots of scattered holographic. And I have a lot of ILNP shades in this finish, and I feel like I have a lot in this kind of color family, but I don't get tired of them. They're very pretty, quite sheer. This is three coats and it's still pretty sheer, I feel like, but still so beautiful. The next shade is an orally, a glitter shade. Ooh, and it's called Inexhaustible Charm. This one is a super pretty kind of coppery glitter shade in a clear base. A lot of you told me to grab this one last year when I enjoyed so many of their other glitter shades, and you are right, it looks fantastic. The camera is doing it no justice. It is shiny as heck, I love it. From Sassy Pants Polish, we have Lady Helen. This one is a glorious gold. Most of the time I wear gold around the holidays, um, or New Year's, uh, I guess that's the holidays. <laughs> but this one just feels really fall to me because it has just a little bit of bronze to it. It's a little bit like antique -y. But anyway, it's like an antique gold base with lots of holographic. Here it is in three coats. Love me some hollow glitter. Love a beautiful gold. Pretty, love this one. Next we have another Bees Knees lacquer. This one is called the Black Heretic and it is a magnetic shade. <sighs> wow. <laughs> you know, I could just not wear these and instead just play with a magnet and you know, that'd be just fine. But anyway, this is a black base and it's got magnetic pigment that pulls in that is like a purple to pink to gold shifting pigment and holographic flakes. I think I put this on my winter seasonal rack last year that I didn't really wear much of because <laughs> I had a newborn, uh, but this this year I've got to wear this. Like that is magic. Look how the pigment shifts, so pretty. And I put another magnetic shade on my rack this season. I know, who do I think I am? <laughs> it's from Blue Word Lacquer and it's called Rainstorming Session. Oh my goodness. You all, how pretty is that? Oh, I can't get enough. It's got a black base too, blue metallic flakes, shattered hollow flakes, and then it also has a red magnetic pigment. Gosh, amazing. Here's what that one looks like in two coats. Just again, so shifty, I have to wear it. The last Bees Knees lacquer shade I have on my rack. Gosh, there, I feel like I had more Bees Knees 
and Bluebird than anything else. Um, but this one is a purchase that I made a long time ago. It's called God Queen Terrine and Troy. This one is a really pretty, oh, I guess, multi-chrome shade. It shifts like this burgundy red to a primary red to copper to gold to green, and it kind of sits in a blackish base. It's really interesting. Here's what it looks like in three coats. Originally, I had it on the rack with my reds, but once I swatched it, it had a black base, so I put it down here with my blacks. Next is a shade from Hollow Taco. This one is called Double Dare. This is a red to black multi-chrome that I impulse bought, y'all. I didn't need this, but here we are. And it's got red reflective glitter. Why did I buy this? I don't know. I have a lot of red to black multi-chromes. I don't love reflective glitter, but I felt like I had to have this. I don't know why. Here's what it looks like in three coats. I feel like you can kind of see the red shift, but it's not as prominent as it is on some of my other red to black shifting multi-chrome. So this one I might not keep, we'll have to see. This next shade is from Cuticula and it's called If the Crown Fits. This one was part of the A Painted Queen collaboration, I think with Toya. So this one released last year and I knew I was gonna wear it for Halloween this year. <laughs> or around Halloween at least. And it looks just as amazing swatched out. That's three coats. Look at the flakes, just look at them. They're glorious. Here is another Bluebird lacquer. Um, it's actually a Boo Bird lacquer, but it's called the Fright Stuff. This came out in the Halloween, Halloween advent for 2021. It has a black jelly base with rainbow flakies. Oh, look at all those. <laughs> Here's what it looks like in three coats. And I'm just really feeling the blacks this season. All right, two more shades. This one is Stella Chroma Axe Fight. This one's a black base. It's got scattered holographic flakes. I wonder if it has holographic glitter in it. It might. And it also has like a... I don't know, it looks brown in the bottle. I know it's not brown, it's just that black base making it look brown. Maybe like a gold shimmer running throughout, it's really cool. I remember in some kind of interview, the maker, uh, Pam, said that this was her favorite shade that she had made, or maybe that she enjoys wearing from the polishes she's made, and so I knew I had to pick it up, and so now I do, and I can't wait to wear it. <laughs> And the last shade on my rack is not really a black, it's more of a charcoal -y gray, and it is Essie Climbing High. This one is like a charcoal gray cream shade, released in the summer collection, but come on, <laughs> I'm not gonna wear this in the summertime, but it seems perfect for fall. Here's what it looked like in two coats. You can see it's almost black. It looked a little bit lighter in the bottle, but it's almost black, very smoky and mysterious. Could be great for winter too, but I think I'm gonna really enjoy it in the fall time. So those are all the polishes that I have on my rack this fall. What spoke to you? What like did you see and you were immediately inspired by? I want to know. Let me know down in the comments. As you can see, I was really feeling the reds this month. I loved the blues and man, I really, really liked the neutrals. Usually I'll pick maybe a black and a brown, but this time a whole row of black and brown polishes. That is not normal for me, but I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you have a great fall and I'll see you later. Bye.